What's up guys, it's Abir, making the first video in a new series, and the thing is, um, we're in a kind of crazy situation, because the world is about to change radically, I mean, I mean, the last time the world, <laughs> I know I, I, I probably sound like some crazy guy saying this, right, with my eyes all wide, but... I'm I'm just I'm just gonna keep this simple. I'm gonna keep it straightforward. There's a lot more videos that I, I want to make, so it's kind of like a explosion in this moment of um, actually finally just communicating to whoever's out there who's interested in the transformation that society is about to go through. Right? Um, 500 years ago, we had uh, Copernicus who presented the idea that um, the sun is at the center of the solar system. <clears throat> this was not a new idea for its time. It had been proposed thousand plus years earlier it had been brought up by uh, scholars in India scholars in the Islamic world and others but for some reason humanity just never really it never really clicked that yeah you know the fact is that the earth revolves around the Sun and um, not the other way around right so this 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 um, reality had a very big impact on how society and humanity and individuals viewed themselves our understanding of the, the cosmos we lived in. Um, it opened up um, a kind of scientific material foundation to the world we lived in. It helped throw off um, the superstition of medieval times. Um, and this Copernican sort of revolution was carried forward by people like Kepler, uh, Galileo, um, and many others like Newton built on that to come up with classical mechanics. And this, this kind of crystal realization that the cosmos had these basic properties that were universal opened up uh, the way for like a philosophical revolution, which opened up the Enlightenment and the idea that there's a basic equality among all humans, uh, supporting the French Revolution, the American Revolution, basically creating the nation state, uh, you know, and, and the modern citizen and the world that we live in today. So this this kind of abstract potent, you know potentially obscure scientific discovery that wow this the sun is at the center of the solar system and not the earth and that sort of being pushed into public consciousness despite the tremendous um backlash uh that that it faced you know um galileo was even put under house arrest for 10 years till he died by the Catholic Church because they were trying to suppress the the truth here, right? So we're going through a similar revolution right now. Um, we could call it a Tarnasian revolution, probably, you know, history may call it by that term or, or something else. But but uh, you could say a psychohistorian, a, a, a kind of a psychologist and, and, and researcher uh, called Richard Tarnas discovered in the 70s working with Stanislav Grof, who's one of the great psychiatrists of the 20th century, that, um, you know, they were, they were trying to test uh, different, um, you know, why, could you, why do you give the same psychedelic uh, dose to two people in the same place? They have two different experiences. What is the causal mechanism, right, behind that? That's a very reasonable scientific sort of question to ask, right? Um, and they discovered against, you know, after testing every psychology test in, in the book, you know, uh, Richard, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Richard Tarnas himself had just graduated from Harvard, um, uh, you know, a, a few years before he joined Groff to study with him at Esalen Institute in California. And so they were really coming with this rigor, Groff himself being a psychiatrist and, you know, one of the famous psychiatrists of his time. They were coming with a lot of scientific rigor into this world of psychology. Right, which previously seemed like a bit impenetrable and vague. In fact, depth psychology as a field of study uh, and, and sort of a, an accepted field in the Western tradition and really, you know, pulling it out of like Buddhism, Hinduism, meditation. I mean, there's a lot of focus on the unconscious in those traditions, but let's just talk about in modernity. Depth psychology really began at the start of the 20th century with Freud. Right, so these guys, Groff, Tarnas, were part of that lineage of people exploring the, the, the unconscious world, Carl Jung and his collective unconscious, things like that. Um, and so they discovered that after testing every psychology test available to predict what would cause two people to have different psychological experiences, uh, you know, Dr. Tarnas discovered that uh, actually somebody's natal chart 
right? What is a natal chart? A natal chart is the position of the planets at the time somebody is born, right? You can call it astrology or whatever you want, but there's some kind of connection he identified in personal experiences between the natal chart of when a person is born, creating a certain kind of psychological um, container that they are, right? That the person is. It's almost like different seasons of consciousness have different... Um, there's a quality to time, you know, I think that's basically what this is. Like in a purely Newtonian Cartesian view, time and matter is completely neutral and empty and things like emotion and, and interior personal experience is just many times written off as just abstract firing of neurons. You know, there's no real meaning to free will to consciousness there's a very famous book uh, on the wall street journal's top books of last year uh uh if i remember i'll drop it in here but basically arguing that everything that we experience is just random firing of neurons i mean it's it's just there is no free will it's just the brain and we're just at the end of the day material beings right but what this discovery by tarnas presents you know is that there's a connection between the spirit the interior experience that a person is having, the psychological experience a person is having, and the external world, right? This is not so um, crazy in, in a smaller way of thinking about it. Like if, if you go on vacation, you have um, a different feeling about yourself than if you were at home, right? But it's this idea that there's this larger nested um sort of containers of meaning that that our psychology exists within right so the fact that somebody's natal chart which is the position of the planets at the time of their birth right and you can call it astrology or call it whatever you want let's just remove all that baggage and just say there's something about each moment of time which seems to have its own psychological quality that connects from the individual to the to some of the lar larger aspects of the cosmos i mean we all know about the seasons right like summer winter spring we feel different in those times but but it seems as if there are these larger seasons related to the alignment of planets okay so dr tarnas had that discovery with regards to personal individuals working with stanislav Grof, one of the most you know respected uh psychiatrists uh psychedelic research pioneers working with you know national governments in Europe, in the United States, uh, they discovered this on the personal level. And then Dr. Tarnas took the next 30 years to research all of world history in the process, becoming one of the most respected historians of our time, right? His first book, Passion of the Western Mind, um, basically uh, presents, a, you know, one of the most respected histories of, of, of West, the development of the West. And then his second book, Cosmos and Psyche, really that first book was just background research uh, you know, for the, the, the second work to really present how there are these dynamics between the alignment of planets and human psychology that you can regularly see, like reliably, consistently happening all the way back through uh, into the deep past, um, right? I myself have now spent seven years doing this research. I myself have seen for myself, right? So I'm going to get a bit technical here. There was there was an alignment between Uranus and Pluto from 2007 to 2020. And it was in those years, 2016, when I first became exposed to these ideas, began researching them, them myself. And then that alignment uh, transitioned into a Saturn-Pluto uh, in, in around 2018. And I was literally just sitting there waiting. I was like, if astrology is real, let's see. You know, we should see very typical Saturn Pluto. So, you know, Uranus Pluto is like like the nineteen sixties. Uranus creating this quality in people of of very innovative, liberated, free, spirited, and Pluto being very heavy, uh, uh, underground, powerful, sexual. So there's this like liberation of of tremendous power in the two thousand seven to twenty twenty, and we see these themes like um, mass media, sexual liberation. Um, things like that, uh, empowerment of the masses that keep repeating every time there's a Uranus Pluto. And we can trace this back, you know, not just 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, 500 years. We can trace this stuff back. 
So, so Uranus Pluto is going on, and now Saturn Pluto is coming. So I'm like, okay, let's wait and see what's going to happen. Saturn Pluto, guys. Um, Saturn being very serious, Pluto being very powerful, generally coincides with a very authoritarian, conservative, restrictive uh, kind of vibe, right? And so I began to see in the fashion world the end of uh, streetwear as this dominant force, a return to sort of classical tailoring and focus on even black and gothic kind of clothes came in. Um, you know, f you know, fashion itself is, 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 is fragmented quite a bit since the advent of the internet, but you could still perceive these these emotional changes right happening in people and the scientists or the materialists rather let me let me just say the materialists they want to look at everything in terms of statistics they're like if these patterns are real then you need a statistical proof right but the issue with statistics is that it's unable to it's unable to really work with emotion right emotion uh emotion and um feeling and perception these are very human qualities i know everyone these days like ai ai is going to take over but ai can recreate something but is it truly able to feel or not you know uh i i think that's a very deep important question right maybe it can always replicate you know it's kind of you can you can train a, a computer to to speak but is it really speaking I, I mean, I know that's one of the biggest questions of our time, right? So what, I, what, I, what I'm referring to this evidence um, and, and, and granted, you know, uh, any, any serious person would, would definitely want to sit with these ideas I'm presenting and maybe want to have a dialogue and get deeper into the research that we're doing. But Saturn Pluto is a very serious time. You start seeing it in the fashion. You start seeing it in the politics. There's a very intense split that starts to occur between, at least in the United States, which I was tracking closely, politics on the left, politics on the right. Donald Trump gets elected, who's like this great Reagan-esque figure since you know the 1980s, which was the previous time we had a Saturn Pluto conjunction. Amazing, right? That that there's this echo every time the same these uh, these alignments happen. It's almost like a window opens into our unconscious and these specific kind of ideas and feelings just seem to more naturally flow and become relevant. And then things start happening in the material world to echo. And that's the craziest thing because I was like, okay, things are getting serious enough. I get it. Um, but then uh, you have um, uh, COVID, which was nuts. You know, I mean, I mean, COVID was really crazy to see. People were literally restricted at home and things got extremely serious, really tragic, almost like a horror movie in some moments. And I was like, oh, my oh, my gosh, like this, this thing happened. And now um, let's see the next transit is a Saturn Uranus transit 2021, 2022. What are some of the things that happen in those times? We see the birth of new paradigms. Because Saturn is like a, a structure, it's a, a, a container, and Uranus is, is, is something new, innovative, exciting. It's, you know, I use these words, hopefully over time you'll start to get a feeling for what I'm, you, you know, the feeling will come alive in you, that these won't just be words that I'm saying, but you can get a feeling for it. Because I think that's the main thing that holds people back um, from, from being able to perceive these um, very plain self-evident truths is, is is tuning into their emotional reality you know um, many people may live through these similar experiences and and um, uh, you know there's an element of depth remember like this is coming from the depth psychology world right so there's an element of being open to one's unconscious and being able to perceive it and I think that's why at least in Dr. Tarnas and Dr. Groff, um, their research, I think psychedelics were a very important part of that because it momentarily dissolved the ego um, for the many thousands of participants uh, in clinical trials um, and, and so on and so forth. It's not that psychedelics are the only way forward. I, I would say, you know, you know, f you know from what I've heard uh, that psychedelics maybe are just putting somebody in touch with the present of what is you know um, just dissolving the ego and throwing one into the unconscious material of whatever's going on um, I I believe you know meditation um, would would 
also be a, a very is in fact um, you know vipassana is something that I've practiced over the years and and meditation also is something that opens up these very deep unconscious parts of ourselves right so it's not only uh, something to do with psychedelics it's just the unconscious right so I'm like Saturn Uranus is going to come along what's going to happen um, and lo and behold you have suddenly this paradigm of AI which has been incubating for five six seven years with open AI things like that but it's like there's this snap you know there's this moment where it's like suddenly there's this new paradigm you know this new system this new structure uh, I was also tracking the carbon credit market and how suddenly carbon credits are in being integrated into every facet of our lives um, there was also the collapse in the tech world because Uranus being this innovative sort of technology feeling and Saturn being this restrictive constraint so many times you have a collapse happening and again you know uh, it's it's not just 2021 2022 we're talking like 2007 we're talking 2001 we're talking 1987 these are all like major collapses uh in financial world uh that all that all because fi the financial world is really just human beings you know mass psychology um all participating in this so i'm sitting here now it's january 2024 um, you know, my, my fiance Somia, who, who some of you may know from, from X or, or Twitter, uh, who will be posting more videos this year as well. Uh, you know, we have a, we have a company, uh, that, that we have, you know, that has been incubating our research, um, for the past few years. So she feels it's very important, um, to, to connect to the world at large. And I think that's a lesson I've taken to heart from her. Like she's been very consistently, on Twitter all of 2023 which was insane you know even sometimes I'd be like don't waste your time on social media but the the people the friends she's made the connection she's made it's been really quite something and so you know rather than having a thousand and one excuses to just stay in my lab and uh, do my research and keep it private and keep it hidden I mean for for many years I've, I, I've, 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 I believed that the best way to deploy these realizations to to you to work with them would be to keep it private you know because people may not be ready for the truth i know again it sounds crazy right like here's some guy you've never met looks crazy sounds crazy he's like people aren't ready for the truth you know but but it's that's that's the truth people are not ready for the truth you know and i mean that on both sides i mean that on on the side of materialists people who lack complete imagination who are stuck in this old paradigm, who are not able to even conceive or consider the evidence on its own terms. And I also mean a little bit people on the other side who are, you know, not not necessarily engaging in, in psychology and this correlation of planetary alignments and world history, you know, with, um, with the rigor and with the, almost like a, a kind of a scientific analysis you know there's there's a lot of opinions out there when you start talking about planets and personalities and cycle it's so it's tough right so what we're trying to do is 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 really sharpen our arrow and aim right at the right at the heart of the truth that we see and i just got this very handy dandy microphone that plugs right into my phone um so you know hopefully this the sound was okay um and you know I've 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 no idea who in the world w will will see this, you know, but um, I I would really love to hear from you, uh, if uh, if and when you do, um, our company is called Numinous Realm. Um, we got this little, uh, you know, neon sign behind us, um, Numinous Realm, and um, and you can find me on Twitter, uh, or X, a beard to sigh, um. I'm kind of a little bit of an introvert kind of person. I'm more comfortable these days, quote unquote, in the lab, um, doing the research. Uh, but I want, I think, you know, I turned 37 this year and um, I think it's time to start sharing this and um, seeding the planet and people who are ready to, um, to, to explore and research um, these realities and, and also um, build with them, you know, because I think that's also important. I'm not saying 
this is all just very spiritual stuff and so it's only spiritual no i think it's very important to integrate matter and spirit together and i believe commerce is 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 a is a facet of human experience that does that you know so i i'd love to meet people who want to learn more and want to create um with these dynamics with these psychological dynamics that are occurring in the best way possible for each other we have a fashion label called integrate this we had our first drop in the fall last year and we use we use these planetary dynamics to design our fashion you know because because everything every facet is sitting on top of uh psychology whether it's politics fashion you know markets so we integrate this does create you know and so we, we got more things coming up um this year uh we're building partnerships with people who can um, support the work that we're doing either as investors uh and then as um employees or team members um and so i think it's 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 that time where this is um so real these things are happening it's a it's a really big deal maybe not everyone believes in it or not but it's time to build right and we want to build a coalition of people who are willing to thoughtfully look at the the, the research the evidence the work that we're doing uh, and consider for yourselves like what is the value of being able to anticipate and build towards specific psychological complexes as they arise you know ahead of time it's almost like planting seeds before it rains and i think one of the benefits of, of sharing this um publicly is that this is too big for any one person or one group or one this belongs to us all you know and just as copernicus his revolution led to all these things the enlightenment industrial revolution modern city like who knows where this is going to go right so we're just here seeding people um you can check out somia's work um my work you can check out integrate this uh, and uh, i would love to hear from you um so wishing you all the best and uh looking forward to creating more and hopefully this wasn't too crazy and uh i always had a lot of um resistance to creating because when i was growing up my dad would always tell me what to not do with with my creative spirit you know um with uh when I, I was a painter for a while an abstract painter and he would tell me how to talk or not talk about my painting and when i was dabbling around in fashion he'd tell me how to you know what to do or to not do with that so the, even with social media you know I, I was like created a few videos and um he was telling me what to say or not say and and there's this part of us that wants to be this this good son that wants to be there for our parents you know but what happens when what your parents are trying to tell you gets in the way of who you are um i think it can make a person kind of depressed actually kind of um you know really not seen and so um i'm just gonna click i'm just gonna say this right now that um i'm gonna try my best to communicate as directly and clearly as i can to you about what is going on and what I'm seeing and um, how it can help you uh, in your your personal life, your psychological journey, your business, your style. Um, because this, this huge, crazy adventure is about to unfold. Um, our main website is numinousrealm.com. Um, there's a little bit of stuff there. It's really the home base. You can see the podcast we have, the fashion brand. Uh, we have a uh, a magazine an online magazine that we're launching called deep now that so me as spearheading so there's a lot of stuff happening and honestly i'm really excited to meet amazing team members who can help uh with this um as i mentioned we are um planning to fundraise this year um so that means you know having very solid early stage team members uh is critical right i mean i mean the, the 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 first few people in a in a company is is really the people who set the stage so if you come across this message and you'd like to learn more um anytime i mean this may be like a year or two three years later who knows what's going on at that time but um you know feel free to send me a message i've always i've always cared about people's journey uh to develop their creative life 
um, I helped to start uh, student clubs. Um, I was I was part of the teams that, you know, um, helped to launch student clubs at NYU uh, in social enterprise. I, I was I was like part of the first executive board for Net Impact uh, when social enterprise was just getting started. This was back in two thousand ten, I believe, uh, with my you know some good friends had started the club and pulled me in to help um, you know be on the first executive board there. Uh, and even at CIIS, where I got my master's degree in San Francisco, I, I helped to create impact at CIIS. And so I always have time for people who are just really trying to be more creative in their life, you know? Yeah. So this is a lot, a lot of different material has just been shared with you on this video. Um, I'm going to upload this. Uh, I know it goes against every little, everything that YouTube says you should be doing uh about uploading videos but um i don't know i i don't know sometimes it just feels like the you know what we're trying to do here is is so big it doesn't really fit into these neat categories and so i'm probably gonna have to make a bunch of um you know shitty shitty content or straightforward raw real you know content to over time begin to make good stuff instead of right from the outset trying to like polish it and maybe cut out things that are important but not um seen so anyways you take care and this is a beer from in new york city and i will see you later bye